Welcome back to the shop and to the channel. We are going to wrap up the build of this power draw bar today by building this front handle and then attaching the knob to the front of it. We'll get started here by clamping the piece of stock into the mill vise, but because I have to drill some holes that are going to be pretty close to the edge, I'm going to use a set of thin parallels instead of the normal ones. Going to get started by inserting the drill chuck in the spindle of the lathe. I've been so wanting to get this power draw bar finished that I've taken to using my impact driver with a three quarter inch socket on it to uninstall and uninstall different tooling in the spindle. So this power draw bar is going to be not a minute too soon. And as I've done many, many times before, as you've seen, we'll use the edge finder to find the right edge and the center of this piece. On this end of the material, I need to drill two holes that will be for the cap screws or the button head screws that will mount this handle onto the actuator that we made in the previous video. Since I'm on center of the part, I'll move the saddle over half the distance between the two holes and then move my table down to the right distance from the top edge. As you've seen many times on my channel, if you've watched the series of this accessory being built, I'll start with a 120 degree spotting drill. Next, we'll drill the clearance hole for a quarter 20 button head screw. And no hole would be complete without a nice countersink. I'll repeat the same procedure for the other mounting hole.
those two complete, I'll reorient the part so I'm back on the zero for the Y. And then we'll move the table down until we are over top of the location for the knob. I'm over the spot now where the knob will be placed, so I'm going to spot this and then drill it and tap it for a quarter twenty. Before I start running the tap, I'm going to put a tap follower in the drill chuck. And for those that don't know, these are made to try to keep the tap vertical in the hole. So you start the tap straight and have much less of a chance of breaking a tap. And it also helps you keep some constant pressure on the tap itself. Well, with a little bit of anchor lube on the tap, we'll go ahead and engage the tap follower and tap this hole to quarter 20. I have this little handheld deburring tool and I'll use that to deburr the back side of that hole that we just tapped as well as the two mounting holes. I am going to mill this part with a taper so after cleaning up with some acetone I use a little blue dicum here so I can scribe some layout lines. Using my drawing as reference, I'm setting the calipers here to the spot where the taper will start and just scribing a very light line. I have this uh, Starrett protractor that was in a machinist tool chest I bought. It was pretty nasty and rusty when I got it. I was able to clean it up good. But I have it set to 5 degrees and we'll use that to scribe the line for the taper down to where the knob is going to mount.
have one of my radius gauges here, which is close to what the actual radius on the end of the part will be. I'll just line that up as best I can and we'll scribe this radius in. I'll eventually just grind this out on the belt sander, but this will give me some idea of where it should be. I'll mill the taper here the same way I did for the actuator. I'll clamp it in the mill vise and then use a parallel to on the top of the vise jaw to line up my scribe line with the top of the parallel. Once I get that scribe line tapped into position so it's even with the parallel, I can tighten the vise jaws. And then removing the parallel means I have a good 125 thousandths clearance to the vise jaw. Well, using a four flute high speed steel end mill and call it in the spindle. We'll go ahead and touch off. And because I did this in CAD, I've got a really good idea of how much material I'm going to need to take off. So we'll just dial that in a hundred thousandths at a time.
I have milled it down to the layout line so I can loosen the chuck and pull it out. I'll go ahead and grab a file and we'll deburr this real quick before we flip it over.
with the milling complete on the second side of the taper, we'll go ahead and pull it from the vise and give it a deburr with a file. Well, since the radius on the end of the handle here is purely decorative, I'm just coming over here to the six inch belt sander and we'll go ahead and grind away the material until I meet my layout line. I'm going to use my scotch Bright wheel here now to go ahead and deburr any remaining edges, soften them up a bit, and also blend in that ground radius with the taper. My original plans for this knob was to machine a stud and then screw that stud into the handle and then the other end of the knob, but I'm taking a shortcut here. I've got a long button cap screw that I'll screw into the handle and then we'll just go ahead and screw the knob onto the other end. Uh, maybe it's not the machinist way to do it, but this is the way that I'm going to do it. You can use these two uh, half inch button head cap screws to mount the handle now to the actuator. Well, off camera, I machined the last part, which I decided to make out of brass, which is just this travel stop that is bolted to the top of the glide shaft. And this just keeps the whole thing from raising up too high and coming off of the mount. I have the tool mounted to the top of the bridge port with just a, an air hose plugged into it. I'll do something a little more permanent later. But we can go ahead and give this a try and try mounting and unmounting some end mills and a collet. Unmounting that was a breeze and nice and easy. Here's a one inch end mill holder. It's so nice just to be able to grab a handle and dismount a tool and I can grab the drill chuck now, put it up into the spindle and just grab it and mount it. It really is going to make tool changing so much easier. I think this is such a game changer in the shop.
Well, that's the end of this project. It is nearly complete, not quite complete. I am going to dismantle this, clean everything up, and for the parts that I made out of steel, I am going to use some cold bluing to protect them from any kind of corrosion. I still need to come up with a more permanent solution for the airline. I think I need to plumb the shop a little more with some pipe for airdrops and then put something in here that's more permanent than this. I'm also going to be replacing these cap screws on the back of the actuator with some button head screws. I think that will make this operation a whole heck of a lot smoother. But besides that, overall, I really couldn't be happier with this build. It, it came out a lot better than I expected. It looks decent, at least to me, and it actually does function, which is the most important part. Well, I want to just give a big shout out to all the subscribers to the channel. If you're not a subscriber, I really would appreciate it if you would hit that subscribe button and help the channel grow just a little bit more. Well, you may not be seeing this in future videos, but I'm sure you're going to hear it when I do some tool changes. Well, thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.